Good morning, everyone. First of all, let me thank the SNT PPO for this opportunity to present at the STE Virtual Career Fair. A little introduction of myself. I graduated from NUS over 20 years ago and started my career working with Nestle R&D. After a number of good years at Nestle R&D, I then started at the then new biomedical sciences sector and spent a good number of years working in that sector. Only 14 months ago, I became reacquainted back with the food R&D sector, helping now the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotech Innovation as its executive director and with a concurrent role as the senior director of the Singapore Food Agency. You'll find out in a moment at the latter part of my presentation why I'm sharing a small snippet of my past history. Today's presentation is about how food science and tech can spice up the life of everyday consumer like you and me. This is a montage about food science activities. It is not exhaustive, it is just images of a number of uh, food science activities. On the top left-hand corner, this is something that is very familiar to all of us because we consume food every day, whether it is food cooked at home by your parents or your helper, or the food that we eat out, whether it's restaurants or hawker center or takeout. It is about how we bring food ingredients together to deliver flavor, texture, and nutrition. Zooming to the bottom left of the montage here, this is the techie part, the cutting edge innovation that we do in the labs, where we can bring novel food ingredients and food products to the consumers. Between these two spectrums, there are many other players in the food science and food innovation journey. They could be your food tasters, your food regulators, your food safety officers, as well as the food manufacturers. Within this ecosystem, whether it is globally or in Singapore, we see a mushrooming of many startups that's giving this sector a lot of energy and dynamism. So this is the contents of my presentation, and I would like to first walk you through Singapore's food s and landscape. This is an image that is very familiar to all of us. Last year, we encountered panic buying of groceries, supermarket shelves emptying out, not just in Singapore, but globally in many countries, brought about by the coronavirus uh, pandemic. This was the year 2020, just a year ago. But the food security effort was introduced a year earlier by the Singapore government in 2019 during budget speech, exactly two years ago, as well as committee of supply speeches. The government launched the 30 by 30 national goal. This means being able to produce 30% of our nutritional needs locally by the year 2030, starting from a relatively low base of less than 10% today, meaning a twofold increase in a 10-year time frame. So this is talking about food security and food resilience, and the coronavirus pandemic simply underscored the importance of this. But if you look at the food industry cluster in Singapore, say seven to eight years ago, you can see a vibrant growth as depicted in this slide. Wave one represents the presence of brand owners in Singapore, moving from manufacturing activities to anchoring some of their R&D activities in Singapore, whether it's company like Nestle, Danone, Abbott, Kellogg's, Coca-Cola, many of them here. This wave one of brand owners very quickly brought about the second wave of ingredient innovators comprising ingredient providers, specialty chemicals, as well as flavors and fragrances. This suite of companies provide the ingredients to the brand owners in the manufacturing of their final products. More recently, and a very exciting space that we are observing right now, is the presence of innovative small companies, local enterprises, startups, incubators, VCs, investors. This space is just so vibrant 
and moving at a very rapid pace. And all this is supported by a number of agencies other than ASTAR, there's EDB, there's ESG, uh, there's also SFA and JTC, NRF as well. And the research performance in the public sector ecosystem would go beyond ASTAR to include the universities as well as the polytechnics. The reason why I shared a little bit about my past history, where I talked about my initial part of my career in Nestle R&D and why I left Nestle R&D to join the biomedical sciences sector then, was a few people told me then that food R&D is not rocket science. But I would like to debunk this old myth because food innovation is happening at a very rapid pace, far rapid than many other sectors. And I wish to support this statement with some data here. In a research innovation enterprise, we often measure the activity and vibrancy using two indices. First is on manpower, represented by research scientists and engineers, RSE. The second is on business expenditure, or on R&D. This means how the private sector is invest investing in R&D. And this study is over a period from 2013 to 2017. So, of course, we will be measuring the compound annual growth rate, KGO for short. So, in this chart, you can see the red dot, which is the food sciences innovation at the top right-hand corner, meaning that it is growing at a very rapid pace compared to the other sectors in terms of the research scientists and engineers, as well as the business expenditure on R&D. So this set of data is not so recent because it was conducted over the period of 2013 to 2017. I mentioned earlier that the startup space is growing at a very rapid pace. So if we were to extrapolate where the sector is growing in the more recent years, you can only imagine that the red dot is just going northeast direction. And the growth of this sector is sometimes limited by the talent that we have. So this is really a call to all of you here to consider the food sector as your career option. So let me now change gear and talk a bit about the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotechnology Innovation, or CIFB for short. This is the youngest and latest research institute under ASTAR. And the formation of this research institute is to facilitate greater partnerships between the public sector, institutes of higher learning and the industry. The mission and vision of CIFB is really about being a global leader, driving excellence in food and biotech innovation for economic and societal advancement. What we do day to day is really about enhancing well-being that's empowered by science. We have three overarching objectives under CIFB. The first is to position Singapore as Asia's innovation capital for food and consumer industries. The second is to support and grow Singapore's branding for high-quality, healthy, safe and sustainable products for the Asian consumers. And the third is about supporting Singapore's national food security goals. There are a number of issues that have to be considered um, in a food innovation journey. First is on food supply chain. Second, food ingredients and product development. Third, on sensory perception of food. And lastly, food safety and health. A quick preview of the S&T capabilities that we have under the CIFB umbrella. In the middle part of this slide, you see six boxes that is underpinned by shared analytical platform. Under the discovery technology platform, we have a very rich natural product library that contains over 200,000 bacteria and plant species for which we can mine for very interesting bioactives. Within the discovery platform, we also have the taste receptor platform. So from these organisms, we can then use a suite of strain engineering tools to increase the yield of the compound that we are interested in, and then bring these strains or host organisms through a bio-transformation process, or simply put, fermentation. Because the food innovation is not complete, just having this three technology platforms, we have to consider food process engineering 
to bring these ingredients to final food formats, system, and products to the consumers. Wearing my SFA hat, my SFA colleagues would often tell me, food is not food unless it is safe. Wearing my CP hat, I would also say, food is not food unless it delivers nutrition, because we do not want to just simply eat empty calories. So this is just a quick preview of what we have as capabilities within CFB. It is an end-to-end -end value proposition that we're offering that is along the food innovation value chain. Fermentation is a very traditional food processing method. Our generations from before would recognize tea, soy sauce, tempeh as traditional food products. The genre that's represented by you and me would be more familiar about products coming from fermentation, like the beer, the wine, and the kombucha. But what fermentation can bring beyond the beverages that we often enjoy is about a process that can bring, say, microalgae to form alternative proteins that we may one day consume as part of our daily consumption of food. So I mentioned to you that um, food is not food unless it's safe, food is not food unless it offers nutrition. The other paradigm is food is not food unless it tastes good, whether you are a person that eat to live or live to eat. So under CFB, we have this taste receptor platform where we've got high throughput infrastructure that enables us to examine a number of tastings, and that includes sweetness, bitterness, the umami taste, as well as the sensation of coolness. But the research and innovation can also be closer to the everyday consumers, like you and me. And I'd just like to give you a number of examples here. Many of us who help out in the kitchen or open your fridge door would sometimes see that the products would have passed its expiry date or they would have been spoiled in terms of its taste profile and have to be discarded. So in the food sector, extending the shelf life of food products is a very important consideration. Just to give you some numbers in terms of the food wastage that Singapore is experiencing. Annually, we are producing 750,000 tons of food waste and we talk about the average household on a daily basis, we are producing about 1.5 kg of waste a day. And I think this number is an understated one. And of this 1.5 kg, half of this is food waste. So we can do a lot more as consumers, as retailers, as manufacturers, to extend the shelf life of food products and how s and can enable some of this shelf life extension. Second example is something that all of us would be familiar with because we consume food every day, and staples is very much part of our daily diet. And the audience here will be very familiar with complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates, and that the complex carbohydrates would offer a positive impact on our human health. Within CFB, we have a group of scientists that has got very cutting-edge infrastructure and capabilities to examine clinical nutrition, whether looking at food ingredients or food structure, whether it's simple carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, or the sequence for which we consume our food, that would then impact a impact on our human health. And in this case, we're talking about postprandial blood glucose response or glycemic response. To give you an example, a dish that's very familiar in the local scene, the chicken rice. So on a plate of chicken rice, you would see rice, you would see chicken meat, as well as some vegetables. And if you, read, if you eat this chicken rice in the sequence of vegetables, meat, and lastly, rice, that would impact the best glycemic response to our human system. So we don't immediately get a sugar spike. So this is the type of studies that we can undertake in CFP through our clinical nutrition group. This is a vintage advert for a vintage cookie that many of us may not be familiar with, but it has a resemblance of a cookie that we all love, and that's the Oreo. This is just to say that food innovation has happened 
through many generations. It is not just a recent event, but I'd just like to underscore that food innovation is happening at an even more rapid pace today. And the innovation that we are seeing in today's food sector is about novel foods. Many of us would be familiar with the Impossible Burger and the Eat Just Chicken Nuggets as well as Shook Meats. The latter two, the Eat Just Chicken Nuggets and the Shook Meats are representations of R&D in the cell cultured meat. So let me revisit this montage again, uh, what food science activity is about. I mentioned earlier this is not an exhaustive list, but there are many opportunities what this sector can offer as career options for many of you. So again, very exciting sector that is growing at a very rapid pace. So I wish for all of you to consider this sector. So three take-home messages to end my presentation. First, Singapore's food innovation industry cluster is growing and growing at a very rapid pace. CIFB, along with our public sector food s and partners, are invested are totally committed in increasing the local production of our food security. And finally, the public sector food s and spans a range of exciting activities from production to consumers and has real-world impact. And I do welcome all of you to join me in this exciting journey. Thank you, and I look forward to the panel discussion later on. <laughs>